Hey everybody, this is Derek with Reef Automation. And sorry I haven't been around. I've been really busy uh, with a lot of different things going on in my personal life and with work and so many other things going on. I hope to get some more videos out and I hope to see you guys on live streams. And I got a lot of great things coming, but I just wanted to go ahead and give my six month review of the Neptune Sky. So before we get started, I wanna mention a couple of things. The first thing is, uh, one of the skies I got from a raffle. I spent probably $2,000 on that raffle and I actually won. So I won the sky on a raffle. Uh, technically it's free, but if you think about it, I actually paid for it essentially three times the price almost. Uh, so one of the skies, of course, like I said, I did win in a raffle. The second I did purchase uh, during the NSI period, uh, which was you know standard retail price. So uh, going forward, I just wanna mention these were purchased by myself. Um, I haven't been paid for this, just like every other review I do, I pay for all my own equipment. Secondly, uh, secondly I do uh, sell Neptune product. I'm now officially a Neptune dealer, but I'm gonna go through this entire review, unbiased, going through what my thoughts are of the sky and show you actually proof. I will show you some pictures at the end of the video that show what the differences have been here in the six months on my corals. And that's really all that matters when it comes to a light is, is it doing its job? And that job is to grow corals and for yourself to see beautiful coloration in all your corals and healthy corals. And that's really all that matters. So let's go forward. You guys have probably seen them uh, in some previous videos, but there they are. I got the two skies there. And uh, for those that aren't familiar with the sky, they do have a moon setting as well. And that moon setting can be adjusted uh, any way you want separately from the lights themselves. I did an entire programming video. You can take a look at that and kind of goes over how to go about programming the sky. You can also use a task, it's quite simple. Uh, but I found the programming of the sky to be quite simple. And it took me only a few minutes to get it all set up. All right, so in the six months, I haven't had a single problem with it. Uh, it's been very reliable. Haven't had any issues whatsoever with it. It's kind of set and forget, which is what you want in a light. Um, there were some things that have come out since the launch that I want to go over and go over again. Mostly my opinion uh, of what I feel about the light. And I'm going to try to be as unbiased as I can, like I said. So the one thing that people have been complaining about is the build quality and the price because of the build quality. Now, here's my opinion on that. My opinion is I've had it for six months. I haven't had a single issue with it. Uh, it's been a terrific light. Uh, these people complain about uh, how, how it's built, what it's built with, what it has inside it. Um, I really just don't care. I mean, if it's, if it's growing coral and it's doing what it needs to do and I like it, then that's all that matters in a light, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what it's built. I mean, there's so many different companies out there that make lights, right? And they all build it differently. Um, for someone to just not like the light just because of its technical build quality, I think is silly because if you have something that's working, it really doesn't matter. Now, in six months or a year from now, might I change my mind on that? It's possible. I might say to you, listen, I wish this was built better because of this and this and this. But again, I've had it for six months and it's been working great. I haven't had a single problem with it. Um, some of the features of the light that are really great that some of the other ones don't have is they'll tell you when the light's gone off. It'll tell you if there's a voltage issue. It'll tell you any type of uh, malfunction with the light. It'll give you an alert. I mean, there's no other lights out there that I know that do that. If there is, then please leave it in the comments below because I don't believe there is a light that actually tells you, hey, the light went off. Uh, you need to figure this out. Whereas with the Neptune Sky, it produces those errors and tells you what's going on. So, I mean, that's, that's really great. Uh, another big point of contention online is that it doesn't have some sort of uh, gasket uh, inside. Uh, and I don't quite get that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't dip my lights in the water. Uh, if you guys are dipping your lights in the water, you're doing something wrong. And if you're dropping your lights in the water, you're also doing something wrong. If I drop my light in the water, uh, I know that I screwed up and I know I'm gonna have to pay for a new light. And I don't care who makes it. If I have a light that's $10,000 and it has a seal and I drop it in the water um, and I'm the one that dropped it in the water, well, I expect to pay another $10,000 because I dropped it in the water. Uh, it's plain and simple. Uh, my lights are roughly 10 inches above my water 
And in the six, seven months, I haven't seen a single water spot whatsoever on them. So if anyone's getting water on them, they're either mounting them too close or they're doing something very wrong. Um, so the fact that it doesn't have a gasket inside, uh, I don't understand why people are getting so uh, fixated on this. I think it's really silly. Uh, so a couple other things I see online is this rubber coating on the light. Uh, something is inferior with the light. It's got this rubber coating. Um, I mean, the Ecotech lights have that as well. So I don't understand what the big problem is with that. Um, I do want to mention also, uh, while we're on the subject, I have used many lights. I have used metal halides. I have used uh, many different LEDs. I've had Ecotech uh, series one, generation one, two, three, and four. I never got around to getting five because I got the sky right before the five came out. Um, furthermore, I have had uh, power compact lights. I've had Ecotech, uh, I'm sorry, Eco Exotic uh, LEDs. I've had Max Spec LEDs. I've had a lot of different lights. And I can assure you with absolute certainty that this light has grown my corals in a, a significant uh, speed that I've never seen before. Uh, my alkalinity, my consumption has been uh, growing and growing and growing. Uh, and again, I'll show you some pictures at the end and show you kind of what I'm seeing in my corals that I haven't seen before. And I went from a Ecotech uh, Generation 4 light to this one, so it is a big step for me. Um, like I said, we're not going to go through uh, in this video comparisons of other lights and which one's better or which one's not. I'm just going to go over what I feel um, this uh, particular light really shines and really uh, I really like about it. I'm also going to go through a couple of the cons here. Uh, so going uh, with what I said about what I'm seeing online, uh, I can tell you that this light does not have a really good shimmer. That's a big uh, contention point online. Furthermore, if, you have, if you're more into getting a Kessel type light with a lot of shimmer, then get a Kessel, you know? Neptune came out with that IOTA uh, feature that allows you to adjust uh, your Kessels from the Neptune, which I think is great. I mean, you're not gonna get that error function uh, that uh, the sky has, but you're gonna get the rest, which is really nice. Uh, another thing I see online is that the Neptune doesn't have sliders for all of the lights, which again, I don't understand the point of contention because if it was me, uh, I'm not adjusting my lights on a daily basis. I don't know about you guys, but if I adjust my lights on a daily basis, I'm killing some coral. So I set my lights and that's it. I don't ever touch it again. So the fact that it doesn't have six, seven, eight sliders for every light, uh, I don't care. I mean, like I said, if I set it to a specific uh, spectrum and the corals are growing and happy, I don't care if the UV isn't separate. I don't care if the um, blue nanometer blue and dark blue and light blue are all separate it just doesn't make sense to me uh so a lot of people are complaining about that but i don't see the big deal like you guys are, are going to set your lights and you're not going to ever touch them again uh and again if you guys disagree with me just tell me in the comments i'd love to hear what you guys think but that's my opinion on that um so one thing uh we're going to go over here is the cons of the light so Everything's not peachy about the light. One of the things I don't like about the light is the power supply. The power supply is quite big. I think it measures about eight inches. Um, and we're gonna show that here in a bit. And it also gets warm to the touch. I think you're gonna really struggle to find a location for that power supply uh, in, certain, in certain situations. So uh, we'll go through that. Uh, another thing that I don't like about the light is the cord. The cord is about uh, 15 feet, I think they said and it's not detachable. So unfortunately, if you want to daisy chain the light, you're gonna have this big 15 foot cord kind of wrapped around um, in a spool basically above your above your canopy. Um, there's obviously a certain situation where that won't be an issue. So I wish they had a detachable cord and I wish you can daisy chain them just to, with one cord. I think that would be great, especially if the cords were like a foot long, kind of like their Aquabus cables or even an Aquabus daisy chain would be just fantastic. But I see their point, I see why they couldn't do that, but uh, that would be something for maybe the next generation to consider. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the power supply. All right, folks, so here's the power supply. Um, you can see it's quite big. I'm gonna sit next to my Trident just so you can get a general idea of really how big this thing is. Um, like I said, I, I'm guessing it's about eight inches. I can measure it and put in the description if someone really wants me to. Um, but it is large. Um, 
I believe it's 220 watts and about a six amp uh, output. Yeah, it's 36 volt by 6.1 amp output. So it is a big power supply. And it is made by Meanwell. Meanwell makes some really good power supplies. So this thing is built to last. Um, it is quite um, large. Like if you touch it and you keep your hand on here, it's gonna start hurting. Like it's, it's significantly warm. Um, like I said, what's kind of nice is they do give you the ability to detach this. So you don't necessarily have to plug it in next to the light. Uh, in my case, I plug it in my cabinet over there. I just want to show this off uh, just so you can kind of get a general idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, so now, like I said, I'm going to go into uh, some pictures of before and after on my corals. All right, folks. So uh, we're going to go over some of the changes that my corals have had and i will go through the picture on the left here and the picture on the right so the picture on the left is from april 2021 when i first put the sky in i took a video and some pictures of my tank and since then on the right is a picture i just took uh yesterday so let's go through some of the uh, major changes from the left and the right. The first one is going to be that plate core on the right there. You can see the coloration, um, again, using the same camera, you can see the coloration on the right is significantly better uh, on that uh, Montipora plate coral um, on the right there. You'll also notice that uh, the Duncan that used to be on the left, I did move that to the be uh, front of the tank, so it didn't die or anything, but I did move it. Uh, and the reason I had to move it was because the mushrooms were just taking over. Uh, you can see the uh, Recordia mushrooms there in the middle just completely taking over the tank. Um, you can also see the Digitota, um, the bubblegum Digitata there in the middle. Uh, there was a lot of bleaching and there was a lot of just not much color, but you can see it here in the right uh, side a lot better um, and you can see the red uh, on the right side a lot better now uh, than the left you also notice the corals uh, to the left of it uh, have grown tremendously and to the right of it are almost touching the surface of the water um, the uh, I believe it's called Alivioropora I don't I don't know the the flower pot coral uh, has shrunk a little bit um, and that's due to the fact that the other corals have just been taking it over um, but as you can see uh, one of the biggest differences is that yellow Montipora uh, in the back there uh, was a tiny little frag you could barely see on the picture and now it has totally grown in the back there. Um, so significant growth, significant color. Um, you can also see that um, the leather coral has pretty much stayed the same, but right next to it is that gigantic. It's probably taken over half of my corner of my tank. Uh, maybe I'll show a few more larger pictures here and you'll see it. Um, of the uh, just gigantic growth of the, I think it's called a Christmas tree monopora, the green one on the lower left, uh, lower right hand corner has grown significantly. So we're going to move on to the next picture. Okay, so in this picture, uh, you can really, really tell the difference. Um, there's a number of things to point out. So the first thing is the bird's nest, uh, which is the obvious one. Uh, you can see the coloration on the left and the coloration on the, light, on the right, uh, how much different it is from the time um, I got the sky. The bird's nest has grown uh, just to a huge amount uh, to the point where I'm having to cut it quite a bit. Um, there's also, you'll notice potentially up in the right hand, maybe in the upper portion, there is a ton of clove polyps that weren't even there that have grown just into ridiculous amounts um, above the bird's nest. Uh, to the left, you will see I think it's called an anacorapora. I, I don't know the term for it, but it's the it's more of a yellow type of acropora. You can see the amount of growth that it's had, and underneath it, probably the most insane amount of growth is I believe that's called a priscillapora. Um, I apologize, I don't know all the names by heart, but uh, I believe that's what it is. And the amount of growth it has had has been just insane. Um, you're also going to notice that there was a little leather coral, uh, but I ended up giving that to a friend. So, uh, that little, uh, toadstool leather is no longer there. Um, but as you can see the growth, uh, between this, uh, just this side of the tank in six months is absolutely insane. And again, the coloration, you guys can clearly see the coloration has uh, improved. 
dramatically. And again, these are done with the exact same camera. I use my iPhone. Um, there's no filter on it. Um, and this is what I get from it. All right, folks. So here is the picture I took a few days ago of the entire tank with using the photo mode. I just want to mention that this is with the photo mode. And you can see the growth here uh, in a little more detail. Uh, specifically on the upper right hand corner, like I said, that plate coral, um, a lot of my coral has grown into just gigantic fashion. Uh, and it also has colored up in a lot of uh, areas, which I didn't notice until looking at these pictures recently. So overall, you can see the sky really does do uh, what it's supposed to, and that is grow coral. So again, I would love to get your opinions um, on the sky just from what I showed you here. If some of you own the sky, I'd love to see some comments below on, on your opinions of the sky. But again, this is my opinion, uh, and I've backed it up with some pictures and what I've noticed over the past six months. And I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.